So this is going to be a troopy episode. I've had it for over a year finished now, and I've just renewed the rego on it for over a thousand dollars a year. Thanks, New South Wales government. So what better time to take the gearbox out? But first, I'm choosing the best comment from the last video, and because none of you are funny, I've chosen it at random. So there it is. And what's the prize you win, I wonder? You win this dead huntsman spider skin. Delicious. Anyway, best comment wins. Now that's enough showing off superpowers. It's time to take out gearboxes. So with all the formalities out of the way, why are we taking the gearbox out? Well, the Troopy has decided to develop a squeaky throwout bearing, and that's diagnosed like this. So whether or not this can be picked up on the video, I do not know. But when I'm just driving along normally, you can hear a weird squeaking. Maybe it's better if I put it in neutral for this. Anyway, if you can't hear it, it goes away when you push the clutch in. Now what this means is that the bearing that's operating the clutch is a bit rubbish. Now this could be one of two things. Firstly, it's the bearing that we just mentioned, and it can also be the clutch fork, as well as the little nubbin thing that that fork sits in. So I'm going to replace all of these things. And that is why I'm taking out the gearbox. So now that this weird bus-shaped object is back in the workshop, we can start taking things apart. Now I know what you're all thinking. Why do you need to open the bonnet to take the gearbox out? Well, the main reason for this is that Toyota has its own suggested method of doing this. And it consists of draining the coolant, disconnecting all the radiator hoses, disconnecting the air filter, and a load of other stuff that almost seems unnecessary. Now I can only assume the reason behind this is when you take the gearbox off, the engine tilts backwards, which would put a lot of strain on all these points that they're saying to remove. Now I'm going to choose to tactically avoid this. I'm going to remove this airbox hose, or the intake, because it's probably less flexible than a coolant hose. And then once I get to the stage where I'm actually removing the gearbox, I'm going to support the underneath of the engine with a strap to stop it tipping down so much. So hopefully all my coolant fittings won't rip off. And the next thing I have to do, unfortunately, is rip out the interior, mostly the driver's seat, because I have to lift up all the carpet to get to the gear shifter to take that off before I drop the gearbox, because otherwise things get a bit difficult.
with any luck, I don't need to do anything else in the cab of the car because now it's up in the air. And I'd rather not climb up on a hoist. So what now? Now once we're under here, there's only a few things really that need to come off. Firstly, the tail shaft. I need to disconnect it at this end, probably hang it out the way. Gearbox cross member, another easy one. I'll probably take off the sway bars just to make life easier. Who knows if I'll put them back on or not. And lastly, is all these bolts around the bell housing. The only difficult ones are gonna be the ones somewhere in there. But there's only two of those, so I'll only have to swear twice. It helps if you leave your car in gear for this. I didn't. My handbrake works, so shut up. Anyway, take two. This is less than ideal. Come on, focus. You can see the oil's leaking out between these two ceiling faces, and that means that the nut in the middle is leaking the oil. The good thing is the seal itself isn't a problem because there's nothing behind here, but what it means is I'll probably have to take off this nut, put a bit of sealant behind it, and then do it up again. Now, there is a crush tube behind this, so you've got to be very careful when you tighten them up again. And there's a lot of naysayers who say all kinds of things about stripping the differentials to do it, but that's completely unnecessary. If you mark the nut before you take it off, you can make sure it's tightened up to the exact same spot it was before, and that's all you have to do about it. Anyway, add that to the list. Forgot to mention as well, make sure you mark your flange before you take stuff off, because that way you'll know it's balanced when it goes back in again. Assuming it was balanced in the first place. Balanced is the wrong word. I mean phased. Now this is probably the part in this adventure where you need to sit down and plan what you're going to do next. Because in case you didn't know, Gearboxes are a little bit heavy, so that means I'd rather not have one land on my head. So what I'll do is I'll loosen the bolts on the cross member, I won't remove all of them fully, and then I'll start tackling the ones around the bell housing. And in case you also didn't realise, this isn't the biggest job in the world, regardless of what scum of the earth mechanics might tell you. If you enjoy scrabbling around on your back on the floor, you could easily do this. Now my plan for when the time comes is to use this miraculous weird jacking thing. And then what I'll do is I'll get everything loose, lower the car down on top of it, and then take the weight of the gearbox, and then I'll lift the car off the gearbox. I know ideally you'd use one of those gearbox or transmission stands, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to do it this way. So that gearbox cross member is now held on just by two bolts. Same on that side, obviously. So that means that when I disconnect the bell housing, the whole gearbox isn't going to fall down because it's supported by this cross member still. And then I'll be able to get the car on the floor and weasel it out gradually. Now this is the point that I'm going to strap up the engine. I'll probably support it around there because this is the split where the bell housing is going to come off. So if I get a ratchet strap and put it around the chassis, then I'll at least be able to control the amount of tip that the engine's doing so it doesn't damage anything in the engine bay. Anyway, do the final checks, disconnect the low range gear stick and all the electronic stuff. And that's it really.
all of these bell housing bolts get harder as you go around. These are the easy ones, obviously. It gets easier around the side. Those ones are a bit of a contortionist exercise. And there's two on the top that I can only assume I'm gonna have to get from above. And there's not enough clearance to swing at all, so I think I'm gonna have to lower the back of the gearbox a little bit to give me more clearance on top of the gearbox, which is probably not ideal. Let's see if it works. I've got a nice bit of an angle on the gearbox now and I should have a lot more space on top of the gearbox about that much. The only downside of this is that I now have to crawl on my back like a peasant without a hoist to get those last two bolts on the top. Jump cut! As if by magic, I'm filthy. Those top two bolts on the gearbox are absolutely horrible. Unless you've got a fistful of extensions, you're gonna have a bad time. Anyway, that's all done. I've installed my anti-engine mount destruction strap there. I've got the gearbox kind of supported there-ish. So I'm just about ready to pry it off and discover which electrical connections I've still left attached. gearbox. Now off camera, I made enemies with these two bolts. They wouldn't even come off with this 240 volt impact gun that does silly newton meters. So that means this took a lot longer than I expected it to. However, it means we have access to the bits that are important. This. Now check this out for a throw out bearing. And that would explain the squeak. Let's shed some light on this situation. The other thing I'm gonna replace is this little ball joint here. And that's about it. From what I can see, aside from being a bit filthy, I can clean all this up. It's not rust, it's dirt. But there's no unusual wear. There's not a thing wrong with the clutch when you're driving it. So I'm not gonna replace it. All I'm going to do are these bearings and throw it back in. Now these are actually in disgraceful shape, so it's no wonder they've gone horribly wrong. But I'm going to replace all of that. Obviously clean everything up in there, but I haven't ordered the parts yet, so let's just pretend that I have. Now by the wonders of pathetic head torch, you can now see this. This is the shaft with the spline that drives the clutch. This is going to be cleaned up and it'll need a little bit of grease on there. And the bearing slides along this shaft here, so same applies to that. Anyway, now that my parts have arrived, I can go about putting this back together in the most convincing way possible. And then you'll finally realize what that ridiculous intro was all about. That's all. Subscribe. Bye. screen lasts for 15 seconds.